This is the open on BNM Bloomberg. I'm John Ehrlichman. Stocks higher again in North America today after a message from the U.S. Federal Reserve yesterday that sat well with investors, investors who have increasingly been betting that we'll see a change in interest rate policy heading into 2024. Some of those investors also hoping that as the fight against inflation improves and the rate story uh, reverses, that maybe even the economy itself can uh, avoid a worst case scenario. But we have seen different performance depending on the indexes we're talking about. That is certainly true if you look at the overall U.S. market versus the Canadian market this year. So let's talk a little bit more about the road ahead. Christine Tan is a portfolio manager at Sun Life's SLGI Asset Management and one of our regular guests here. Nice to see you. Good morning, John. You Good were to not, be here. You were not surprised, I guess, by the Fed message yesterday? We were not surprised by the no rate hikes. We were surprised by the presser and the Q&A. It was a very marked change in the tone of Powell. So, kind and you a, saw that in the markets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as we would say in the markets, dovish, mm -hmm. feeding into something they had been very reluctant to commit to the idea of cutting interest rates. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you listen sort of like we do, because we love these things, like listening to the pressers. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's such a nerdy thing to say, hey, right? We live on that. But yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to exactly what he said, you know, so there were some interesting comments. One was he said, well, well into restricted territory. That was a comment he made at the beginning of his presser. Notable because of how much bond yields had rallied. The other, there was, there was a question from one of the reporters on, do you need inflation to be well on its way to two or close to two before you start to cut? And he actually essentially said no, because rate cuts will act with a lag. And of course, the doves took and ran with it, as you said. You know, clearly the bond market is pricing in a lot more than what the dot plot has said. Well, I mean, we've done a lot of central bank talk this morning, so we yes. won't go too deep into it. But I mean, even the former Bank of Canada <laughs> governor Stephen Polo has said as much on uh, BNN Bloomberg this week. He was talking to Amber Camwar, and he noted that, look. There is a lag with monetary policy, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if in Canada we haven't seen the full extent of rate hikes yet, right. does the inflation have to get exactly to the nose, right. back to a so-called 2% target? Actually, we had a good conversation earlier with uh, Royce Mendez of Desjardins, who noted because things are changing quickly in the bond market, that actually helps our mortgage market today even before the Bank of Canada changes policy. But I guess I am curious to get right into the investing story mm -hmm. for Canada because um, people have been worried about the outlook. We keep talking about the mortgage market here. Yes. Uh, our benchmark, the TSX, is up. I mean, we're on pace for a gain right now. If uh, we were done the year, we're getting pretty close, mm -hmm. about 7%. But you're looking at uh, the S&P 500 that's uh, up about triple that so far yes, this year. Exactly. As a strategist, how do you think about that going into 2024? It's a good question because up until I would say very recently, uh, literally in the last couple of days, we had sort of had an overweight to U.S. equities on a relative basis. So neutral equities overall, but relatively overweight U.S. And it was because of the strong on fundamentals. Well, we've now neutralized that because of the rally, because of where valuations are. Uh, and if you look at what the TSX is, is sitting at, in terms of PE multiples, forward PE, which is a kind of simple way of looking at valuations, it's about one and a half PE turns below long-term average. And the opposite is true for the U.S. So that's why we neutralize that sort of relative call for uh, TSX versus the U.S. So um, we say it all the time, but, you know, the like in Toronto, I mean, tech mm. stocks are ripping higher this year, yes. but it is uh, it is energy stocks, mm. it is the banking sector, it is our broader materials complex, which includes gold names mm -hmm. that do a lot of the heavy lifting for the TSX. They have a lot of muscle. So would you see those sectors as being in a position to be better performers next year, it's, um, uh, comparatively speaking? That's And what you're pointing out is essentially how much more cyclical the TSX is versus the S&P. So we do think it'll be a better year next year for banks. So out of curiosity, because I was coming in today, yeah. I did a search on mortgage rates. I actually found one that was a six-month fix with a 3.99% rate. I haven't okay. seen that in a long time. Okay. And the reason why I bring that up is, you know, if you kind of pull it all together, you were just talking earlier about how much can, uh, Canadians are now spending on servicing debt. A lot. <laughs> and, right, yeah. and there's a lot of yeah. mortgages that are yeah. coming due in the next year. So all of this kind of feeds into perhaps that pressure will ease, which is good for banks in a way. 
And um, I, we, we showed for our television audience sort of a, a, a graphic that highlighted mm -hmm. how you think about positioning. Um, uh, fixed income is part of that as well. We've talked a lot about it. Yes. We're, we're seeing, um, I guess, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but we've had some people who had been lobbying for locking in some of the yields that were available in the fixed income world mm -hmm. ahead of this kind of development. Which, um, uh, so, um, uh, now that things are continuing to move in the bond market right now, how do you think about investing in fixed income? Like, what are the kinds of things you would be gravitating towards? We've liked bonds for a while now, and you could say we were early for, for, for the first little bit of this year. We have a preference for governments and duration over credit, so underweight high yield. Again, that's, that was a bit of a detractor uh, for parts of this year. And to your point, though, once you've seen a peak in the interest rate cycle, this is when you want to start thinking about owning more duration. Because as the economy normalizes, as rates normalize, let's not even talking about rates coming down a lot. As it normalizes, that's all positive for duration, government bonds especially. And people start buying the bonds. Correct, which is which what we saw the, yesterday. the yield yeah. goes down. Correct. So you, you, by comparison, if you buy later, you get a lower yield. Right. And you also miss potentially some the of the upside of the bond going up. So that's kind of the dynamic that you've been that's right. That's right. Betting on? So one of the things that we try to explain is that if you think sort of simple, so the uh, Canadian um, index has a seven-year duration, roughly. So for every 1% move in bond yields, the underlying bond price changes by 10%. Mm. So if bond yields drop by 1% roughly, the bond price would increase by roughly plus or minus 7%. So that's exactly the capital appreciation that you're sort of talking about. That's when you want to start thinking about duration, when the rate cycle is starting to turn and interest rates on their way down.